Hey everybody, this is a tutorial for relative beginners in Blender who want to practice their modeling techniques and make a very simple watch face and body. All right, um, this is an image that I found on the internet that will be perfect for this and I'll provide this image um, and I didn't draw it and I think it's public domain but we're just doing this for fun uh, anyhow. Um, this is my Blender startup screen and people have been asking me why it might look different from theirs. So the first thing I'll mention is if you go to file user preferences, um, where is it? Under themes, there we go. Um, I've chosen the science lab theme. All right, so that's why mine looks a little bit different than yours. And of course I'm using Blender 2.79. And the other thing is, when I hit my tab button to go into object and, or edit mode, I get this pie chart. And that is also up here in user preferences under add-ons. If you were to search for pie, you would find, see, there it is right there. You would click this box here and uh, save it. And you would have that if you like to use that. Otherwise, when you hit tab, you just go into edit mode or into object mode. All right, so um, uh, one of, what we're going to do is starting in the default startup screen, I'm going to delete everything. So I'm going to hit A, and A is what you use to select and deselect. So A, everything, and hit X, and just delete. So there's nothing in my scene except the grid that is no, normally there. I like to switch over to Cycles Render. It's not uh, super important, but when I do that, I'm able to use some of the computing power of my uh, graphics card. Uh, but again, you could just do this in the regular Blender renderer. One of the hardest things will be to bring in this background image because we're going to bring it in three times for the front view, the right view, and the back view. And we have to sort of set it up and, and get it in the right position. But from then on, it's going to be relatively straightforward. But we will be using methods such as, um, you know, bringing in mesh primitives and uh, extruding and scaling rotating, uh, we'll be grabbing points and moving them, we'll be using various modifiers such as uh, bevel, subdivision surface, the spin, and we may use uh, curves a little bit. So there's a lot of stuff going on to make it something very simple. You could then go on and add a very simple watch band if you wanted to, but let's have some fun and just, and just model this, all right? Okay, so over in Blender, we're going to bring in those background images. And the way you do that is you open up a little panel over here by hitting N. And notice that my screencast keys are on, so you can see what keys I'm pressing. I'm going to scroll until I see background images, and I click that arrow. And I don't have to put a checkbox here. As soon as I add image, it does that. Let's, bring, let's set the axis for the view to front view. So we're going to see an image from the front. So what image? I'm going to open that image. So I'm going to navigate to where I've saved it. And like I say, you're going to be able to download this image. And uh, where is this thing? Simple watch. Okay. So I'm going to choose the front view image. And you can click here, by the way, and you can graphically see what you've got. We're going to use these later. Open image. Now I don't see anything yet because I need to switch to the front view. So I'm going to press 1 on the number pad and 5. And there is my image. Now, one thing to note is that my 3D cursor, this red and white circle, is right in the middle of the X and the Z or Z axis, right in the middle of the stage. But my front view image is not there. So we're going to have to position it so that it's right in the middle, right at this dot here. I want my 3D cursor. Now I'm not going to click my 3D cursor over there. I'm going to move the actual background image so it lines up with this. Now I've created these images uh, for the values that might be a little bit easier and see if these are right. So I'm going to change here. This one's going to say 2.17 and 0.45. Let's, so let's give that a try. So down here, okay, right above where it says flip horizontally or flip vertically, uh, I want 2.17, I believe that was, and that's pretty centered. And what was the other value we want? We want 0 0.45. So let's try that, 0 0.45, and we'll see how close 
that gets us pretty darn close to the middle. So if I click another number key button, say three, I don't see it. But whenever I press one, I do. But by the way, if I'm off like this and I just press one, I mean, sometimes you have to press five to go from perspective view to orthographic where you're looking straight on. All right, so we now have the front view in there. I can now close that and we're going to add another image and let's do the back. So add image, we can add the same image. All right, the view we want to use is back, but we need to switch to the back view. We are in front view still. Front view is one, back view is control one, or you can switch down here. See, it says control numpad one. Now, once again, the 3D cursor is here and it doesn't line up with the background image. So let's see um, if this is gonna work. Minus 2.10, so down here, make sure you're switching this one and not this one. Minus, minus 2.10, okay, that brings it pretty close. And 0 0.45, 0 0.45, let's try that. And that looks pretty good as well. I can now close that. So one is the front, control one is the back. All right, and by the way, we should save this as, so I'm gonna call it Simple Watch Video. All right, we need to add one more for the side. So add image down here, it says it's not set. Set the view to, we're gonna choose right here. And the right, to go to the right, you can come over here and say right, see it's numpad three. So you just hit number three, all right, and three, and I don't see it yet. And so I have to open it, but it's in memory, so I can just choose it again. It's close, but it's not quite on yet. So there's the right, 0 0.13. Let's try that, scroll down here, right there. 0 0.13, hmm, I'm not liking that. I'm not liking that number there. Let's try the next number though, 0 0.44, 0 0.44. I like that, but this is not quite on it. So let's see which direction we have to go. So we gotta go less than 0 0.13. Let's try 0 0.08, no, not yet. 0 0.05, close, watch it be zero. 0 0.02, 0 0.0, and that's the problem. You have to be careful about these boxes. 0 0.025. All right, that's pretty close. We can we can work with that so far. Let's hit end to close this, and we now have a right view. You can see it says right, front view, control one, back view. Hit one. We're going to start in the front view. All right, so we're going to start modeling and I'm just rolling my mouse wheel up and down so I can scroll in and out or zoom in and out. All right, well, this is pretty much a circle. So we're gonna start with a circle and when I bring in a circle, the 3D cursor determines where that comes in and it's right at the center. And by the way, if you ever click and your 3D cursor is off there, you can go Shift C and that'll bring it right back to the center of your stage, really the center of the X and the Z axis if you're looking from, from front view. Okay, so let's bring in uh, a circle. The simplest way is to just go Shift A. That's the hotkey for the Add menu. And we can add all of these things and we'll add some uh, other things later, but right now we're gonna choose Mesh Circle. Over here, you see the values for the circle. And the most important one for us is the number of vertices. And the more vertices, uh, the longer it takes to render, the harder it is on your computer, but also the more sort of accurate and smooth it will get. Uh, we're gonna leave it at the default value so you don't have to change anything, 32. And here we can see a circle. But, well, it's hard to see. We're looking from the side view. If I look down on it, if I, you know, from the top, in other words, if I hit number seven, you can see the circle. But from one, we don't really see it. We're going to rotate that circle up so that it's you know, like a watch face. So we're going to rotate around the x-axis here. We're going to go RX90. And we're going to get that. And we, we're pretty close to the correct size already. Well, we're gonna start editing this. So down here, object, you're gonna switch to edit mode. And you can be in vertex selection mode, which I am right now, 
or edge or face. There's no faces in there right now. So I'm gonna, I, I wanna leave it on vertex. And if you can't see anything, just hit A to select everything. By the way, I will tend to go control tab to switch between vertex and face and edge. Okay, but I just watch down here as I do that. If I switch to edge, it just lights up that. All right, vertex. Now hit A to select it. And let's make this whole line of vertices match this uh, inner uh, line. Actually, no, let's match the outer. So let's S to scale, pull your mouse out till it lines up with that black line, as close as you can get it. Cool, okay. We now need to make this line here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extrude. We're gonna hit E to extrude and left click and then S to scale and pull your mouse to here. So we now have that. Now if we go over and look at the back view, let's say control one, that should line up pretty good with the image. It's not bad. And three, it, you, you can see that it's right there. Um, it's in the middle right now of the object. So we're going to hit A to select it all and I'm gonna pull it up until it matches this line, all right? Because that's what we have done. This outer black line here is this black line. If we go back to one though, we extruded into, I'll deselect, into this edge. Now if I go to three from the side, all those points are overlapping. We want to pull this forward now until it lines up like that. So from one, it should look pretty much the same. From three, it looks like that. Now, I may have some polys that are facing the wrong direction. All right, the, on the underside, they're light. On the front side, they're kind of discolored. They're flipped. And um, all I can tell you right now is just to select it all and go Control and just watch the color down here, okay? See the way it got lighter? Sometimes when you extrude, you may go the wrong direction. Not that there is really a wrong direction. And some of your polys may be facing the wrong way. So anyways, we're starting to make that front sort of bezel area. Now, we're going to leave this part for now. And let's just, let's just select this ring right here. And the way you select the entire circle is you click on the line here, and you can do this in edge selection, or vertex selection and you hold shift and alt and click and that'll get the whole thing. If you just click one, you'll just get one vertex or one edge, all right? And if you hold shift, you can go around and go around, but who wants to do that? Just shift, alt and click either in edge selection or vertex selection. Let's go back to the side and see this. Let's create this part here. All right, let's pull these back, but I don't want to just pull them. Control Z to undo that. I'm going to extrude them. In other words, make new geometry and pull it back. E to extrude and then pull. Now, one thing we haven't been doing is looking in wireframe mode, and that will help to see the image in the background. So if I hit Z or come down here and choose wireframe, I can see through. I can see how far I need to pull this. And that looks just fine to me. All right, so uh, it's going it's going well. And by the way, as you move um, off of an orthographic view, sort of a straight on view, as I hold down the, the middle mouse button and I pan around like this or rotate, I lose my background image, which is good so I can just see my model. All right, back to three. Now let's think about what we want to do. We want to create this back region. Now we're going to do it all as one piece. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to extrude and we're going to scale down to make this. So let's hit E to extrude and let's pull it out to that point there. And then let's hit S and scale like this. And we're in wireframe so we can see through. All right, so this is what we have so far. It's open at the back, and if I go out of wireframe, and I get my pie chart, if I hit Z, I can choose solid, or you can just do it from here. If you're in wireframe, just go back to solid. We have this so far. Let's hit um, Control-1 and look at the back. 
And let's go back into wireframe. Now this is where the diagram is a little bit off. Um, from side view, we did what looks like a pretty good job of scaling that in, but it doesn't fully match uh, the back. And so what I want to suggest we do is using the back now, I want to scale back out S and pull out to it matches that. Let's go back to three and see, okay, it looks like it's still pretty good. Let's go back to, to the back, control one, and let's make this this part. Now this might just be a graphic, this black line, or it might actually be part of the geometry. So let's hit E and S and pull in. E to extrude, S to scale. Let's go to three and see. Okay, so it's looking kind of flat there, which is just what I really want anyhow. And then let's close it off now. All right, and the way I want to do that is hit E and Alt M to bring up the merge dialog box at center and then deselect. Let's go out of wireframe, okay, just with the pie chart or just over there and we'll see what we have. In fact, let's go back to object mode we have this. Okay, it's not looking smooth or anything yet, but it still looks pretty nice. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make the, the, fr the front of it. Um, now, you can't really see much. I'm going to go to wireframe. Um, all right, we want to make uh, the indentation. Now, this line that you see here is really in the back. It's not in the front. There's the front line right there. All right, so it's because we're looking in wireframe. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to shift and alt and click here to get the whole row. Now, we're going to have to use our imagination a little bit because if I hit three to look at side view, even in wireframe, you can't see how far it goes in to make the, the front of the watch face. Um, or if I'm in one front view, you can't see what it does here. So let's just do what we want to do here. So just follow along with me here. So I've got this and what I'm going to do is I am going to hit E and I'm going to pull down in the Y direction a little bit. So try to get a position where you can see that. So like that. So I'm going to hit E to extrude and then I'm going to pull down just about that much. Think about how far down you want to pull uh, yours. And then now we're going to bring it into the middle to create that flat surface where we're going to have the hands and then all that stuff. So the way I suggest we do this is to hit E again and S to scale just a little bit. And then E and S, pull it in a whole bunch more. And then let's do one more. E and Alt M, merge at center, just like we did before. And be careful that you're choosing at center. Deselect. Now let's go into object mode and see what we've got. See, we dipped it down and then we made a flat surface. All right, let's add some smoothness to this now. We're going to add a modifier. Come up here to the wrench, and by the way, you can use your scroll wheel to scroll through this. Choose the wrench, choose add modifier, subdivision surface, and change the view to two, and leave the render at two. Come over here under edit, and on the, the tool panel and choose smooth. And this is what we have. Now it looks a little bit like a bowl. It doesn't really look like a watch yet. And that's because uh, the subdivision surface really smoothed it out. Um, if I go back into edit mode, you see, well, these lines look like it should be straight, but it's stretched. We need to add some edge loops to um, give this thing some support. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover our mouse over here and I'm going to go control R and that brings in an, in my theme, anyhow, a pink line called an edge loop. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it up near the top row, just about there. Now let's go back into object mode and see that's sharpened this line up a little bit, not too much, but we're going to do more back into edit mode. Let's add another edge loop, control R pull down to about the same distance as we had from the top one to there. Now let's have a look at that. See the way it's sort of sharpening up? Now we can pull those down further if we want. If I wanted to keep going, if I want it sharper than that and more mechanical looking, I could do that. Now 
there's more that I can do on this side. I've just brought in an edge loop on this side. If I bring an edge loop here and push it up there, it'll sort of squeeze it together to sharpen that up. And I think that's what we should do as well. So I can deselect that. With my mouse over here, if I go Control R, I get a pink line there. Click and drag up. You don't need to go right to the end though. Now, look at that. Now we have a sharp end that looks like a watch. Maybe we want to do a bit more work here. All right, let's do that. Let's add an edge loop on this surface here and bring it close that way. There, I can do it anywhere down here. Control R, bring it over, not too close. Let's look at what that's done. And that's sharpened that up. You can make it as sharp as you want. It's up to you. Okay, so it's going pretty good so far. Now, this whole area here is looking a little bit vague. Um, if we go into edit mode, we can just see what we could do about this. One thing that I often like to do is in face selection, I'm, just, I'm going control tab and switching, but you could do it down here. Notice that it looks different now than when it was an edge or vertex selection, right? You see these dots here. I like to select all of these polygons and pull them out a bit. I want to create like a bit like a battery compartment well, you know what, maybe we should do all of this, this whole area here. So one good way to select all of these polys, well, you could do a couple things. You could hover your mouse over here and go uh, shift alt like we did before, and that'll get a row of polys. If I'm in edge selection and I do shift alt on an edge, I get the, the whole row of edges. But in face selection, shift and alt, I get all the polys and shift and alt, I may or may not, depending on where I click, get all of the polys. A better way probably to select all of these sort of pie wedges is to go C for paint select, click in the middle and it will get them. And if it didn't, just, you know, if you just selected here, you can just sort of run your mouse while you hold the left mouse button down and get all of them and do the same here and it will add to your selection. And if you go a little bit out and you go, oh, I got those, just hold down shift and paint back over them. Now you can't do anything until you hit escape. They're still selected though. And what I want to suggest we do is we extrude these down a little bit. So I'm going to hit E to extrude and left mouse button. I'm going to pull down in the Y just a little like that. And we can adjust this uh, later on if it's too much or too little. Um, if we look at this, you start to see a little area coming out, but it's not very defined. We need to put some edge loops again. So we can deselect this and where to put edge loops. Well, you're just going to have to learn. Just by practice, you'll start to get a sense where you need to put them to sharpen things up. I'm going to put an edge loop here, Control R, and I'm going to pull it close to that region. Now let's watch and see what that's done. That's sharpened that up. I'm not super pleased with that yet, so let's do one, maybe one more and see if we like it right here on this side. Often you'll go on both sides of an edge uh, to get the effect you want. So does that look any good? Does that look like a watch still? Well, let's just go with it. All right, and we can put some text on there later. All right, let's don't forget to save. All right, let's hit one and go back into front view. Can't see much. Let's go into wireframe and it'll look crazy because we have a subdivision surface on. If I take it off, it's a little easier uh, to see. You can toggle it on and off uh, with the eye there. Um, we're going to make all this stuff later. Let's go ahead and make these little arms that would hold the watch band that you can see sort of right there. So we're going to make the arms. I'll go ahead and leave that on. Now, to do this, I'm going to bring in, well, you can do it multiple ways. I'll bring in a cube. When I bring the cube in, it's going to show up at my 3D cursor right there, and that's totally fine. So I'm going to go, uh, let's get out a wireframe for the moment. Shift A, Mesh, Cube. So there it is. I'm going to go into this when it's selected into edit mode and let's go back into wireframe. All right, so we can see through it. Now we're going to start scaling this. And so I'm going to go S. I'm going to scale the entire thing just globally. So it's getting smaller in every dimension. Now, by the way, it's down in near the middle, which is fine for us. Let's go back to front view. And I want to move this over to here. So I'm just going to hit G to grab. And I'm going to bring it over to here and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to sort of line up this sharp point with 
the the edge of the the diagram now it's easier to work in vertex for this so i switch to vertex there now you have to remember that this is a 3d object and so if i just click there and i start moving or really what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be moving this down if if i click there and i'm going to use g to grab and and pull if I do this, I only get the point that I selected there. I didn't get the bottom point. And I know that probably looks weird to you. So the way to do this is while we're in wireframe, um, choose B to border or box select, draw a rectangle around, and you will get all the points that you need um, in, this, in this fashion. Hit G and drag it into the watch following this line. All right, and if it didn't work and you deselect it, B, box select them again and move them until they're roughly in line. Come into the body a little ways. Let's do this one. B, box select. And for this case, because it's straight, I can just pull it over and that'll keep a nice straight line there. Now again, don't just select that point and start moving it, all right? B, box select, and let's go G and drag it down in. Now, it might be a better idea to have these straight, but I don't think it really will matter. It can follow the curve. It just might get confusing to you after a while. Now, there's the top view. If I then go to, say, Control-1, look at the back view, lines up pretty good. We could grab all of these, pull them over a little bit. Let's go back to front view. Nah, it's off the diagram a little bit because they're not lined up perfect. That's pretty good, though. Um, let's go to the side view, though. Three. No, okay, that looks nothing like the diagram. So here's where it gets a little bit weird. It might look odd to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to B and box select all of these, and we're going to pull them so they're starting to look more in line with the diagram. So I moved all both of those. Now I'm going to move just this one. Now you might be thinking, oh, you're screwing everything up. We'll go back to one. It's still all right. I'm just looking from another view and trying to get it to match up a little bit more. Now this stuff looks a little bit weird. I'm going to box select these and I'm going to pull them forward. And I'm going to pull them up here so it starts to match the diagram a little bit better. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to pull them in. And I'm going to grab these and I'm going to make them line up there. And I'm going to grab, let's say, this and make it line up here. Okay, now how's it, how's it looking here? All right, we need to pull these back into the body. Let's go back to, the, to three. All right, those are fine there. I guess we need them in there. All right, and this probably isn't really going to matter. Anyhow, I just don't want it to come off the diagram. It doesn't quite match up yet, and I know this part is a little bit weird. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some edge loops, and you'll see what happens. I'm going to go Control-R, click, and then I'm going to take... Let me, see, let me just see what's going on here. Yeah. Well, we're going to take both of those points, and we're going to pull them up and start to simulate a curve. I'm going to put another edge loop, control R, and I'm going to take both of those and I'm going to pull them up. And we just want to get a curve. I'm going to grab these and pull them up like this a little bit. And I'm going to grab these and pull them up a little bit like that. Let's go out a wireframe and have a look at this. Okay, see what I've done. Okay, um, it might be nice if these were, let's see if I, if I drag these up here and they're more in line. Let's see what changes over here. Oh, they're looking nice like that. Let's line these up and it'll be easier to understand. All right, let's grab these and if I pull them to line up, it might start to make more sense. Let's grab just this and make it line up like that. Let's look from the top again. Mm, what have I done? I've come off my diagram. There, let's look at three. 
Yeah, that looks okay. Now what's going on with this point? Let's hit one. Everything's fine with that point as far as I'm concerned. So what's going on with this point? That looks okay as well. So let's go out a wireframe and have another look. Look at this look from the bottom. Okay. Now what I've done is I've moved some points by accident a little bit. So I'm just going to line these up and it's going to look a little bit better. I want to make it like a nice curve. So I'm just going to select that point and that point. There we go. A little bit better. Well, when we put on a subdivision surface, it's going to look even better. So let's do that now. We only have to make one of these. All right. And by the way, it doesn't look like it pushes into the into the body uh, as much as I would have liked. So let's look from the top or the bottom and see. See, this end here doesn't quite match. Let's go into edit mode, grab both of these points. Let's just pull them in a little bit more, maybe a little bit over. Okay. And we can then tweak this if we want, if we feel like we need to adjust it. But I think it's going to be just fine, especially from front view. Okay. So great, let's add subdivision surface. I'm going to do that from object mode. You don't have to. Uh, and we may have to tweak the points more. Now, as soon as we do that, it starts to look like a, a horn of a unicorn. Uh, and, and then with smoothing on, um, we need to add edge loops to make this sharper. All right, or maybe it looks like a dinosaur tooth. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control R right here and I'm going to drag an edge loop up near the top. And I'm going to put one here, drag it near the bottom, and it starts sharpening that. I'm going to do it on the top, over to the side, near the side. I don't bring it right on top, right there. That's good enough. Okay, and we also want to do them on the sides, down near the bottom and up near the top. And let's see how that looks. Okay, pretty nice. That's going to be our clip or a little for our handle or for the watch band. And it looks pretty much like the diagram. Now, I said we only had to do one, and it's true. We're going to mirror this over to the other side. So make sure that your 3D cursor is right in the middle. If it was up there somewhere, go Shift C. It's right in the middle. Select this while that 3D cursor is right there. And let's minimize the subdivision surface. Choose Add Modifier, Mirror. In the X, make sure there's a check mark in the X right there. And in the Y, no, in the Z. X and Z, and it mirrors from this one to there and to down there. And we now have all of them, and it matches the diagram. Control 1, it matches the diagram as well. Pretty close, anyhow. All right, so we don't have to apply that mirror. We can just leave it like that. So. It's coming along pretty good. That was a little bit of a weird step. And by the way, if you don't like the shape of this, you can still go back in here and maybe from the side, uh, maybe the other side, you can, you can still, um, as long as you have your wits about you, make sure you get all of the vertices. Um, so for example, if I'm in wireframe, what could I do if I grab these and just G, I can just pull them a little bit. And if I like that, I can just deselect, come back out and say, okay, I think that's an improvement. Um, whatever, it's up to you. All right. Okay, cool. So where are we at now? Let's go to the front and in wireframe so we can see. I think we're ready to do this part right here. Let's do the uh, little, um, oh, what do you call that thing? Wheel. <laughs> Okay, with my 3D cursor still right there, I'm going to make this out of a circle. Shift A, mesh, circle. Well, we're looking straight on the thing, and I'm in wireframe, by the way. I can be in solid mode if I want, or solid view. Um, I need to rotate it around like this, sort of like around the Y, so I can make it there. So RY90. Okay, I'm going to pull it out. It's too big. Let's look from the front. But let's sort of center that dot right there, right in the middle of that knob. Oh, that's what it's called. It's called a knob. Go into um, edit mode. And now we can't really see it there. But if I go to three, um, if I go back into wireframe, because this is blocking it, I can see, ah, oh, there's, there's my, my knob. So I'm going to go S to scale, 
bring it down. I've used the default number of vertices, which was 32, and that's just fine. Okay, so there it is, sitting right there. Okay, three, one, okay, everything's fine. All right, well, I'm gonna pull it back into the body of the watch, and I'm gonna hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull out to around there, and then let's close it off. We don't have to be in wireframe for this. It'll look a little bit easier. Let's go E and S just a little bit. E and S, about halfway in. Now it's looking dark, all right? And that's because some of my polys are flipped and we'll, we're gonna deal with that in a second. E and Alt-M, merge at center. Okay, it doesn't look nice and silvery like this does. So let's select it all and Control N flips the polys or you come down here to mesh normals recalculate outside control n and it's back to looking like that but we could do a little bit of work on this to make it look a little bit nicer um uh well let's first of all put on a subdivision surface and see how that looks of two and smoothing and that could be good enough for you as a matter of fact well it's I'm, I, th I wanna sharpen this up a little bit. Let's bring an edge loop close to this edge, not too close, and let's see. You know what, let's just leave it like that, okay? It's very simple, but that's what the diagram calls for. Control one, it fits. Three, if you look in wireframe, it fits, it's close enough. If you wanted to, you could hit S to scale, make it a bit bigger back in a solid view and just make sure that it is touching this side all right and then it's embedded cool so we have a knob very simple knobs there's a lot of stuff we could do to uh, make that look better but for now that's what we wanted to do all right we're just practicing our 3d modeling so far this part was a little a little bit tricky the way i did that and i'm still not super happy with this shape i would probably go in and tweak it a little bit more and it's up to you but it does fall in the diagram Okay, cool. All right, we are going to now add some of this stuff. Now, I want to add these markers here at 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're going to need 12 of them. Uh, all right, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use, let's use a plane. Shift A, plane. Brings it right there, and it's this way. RX, rotate X, 90. All right, so it's laying flat. We're in wireframe mode, that's fine. Let's go into edit mode and it'll turn that color. And let's scale. And let's start working on the width of this. Let's bring it up to this position here. Now be careful, we brought it right in the center and that's gonna be very important. Don't go moving it off the center. All right, let's SX, scale it in the X. Now it doesn't exactly match the diagram because maybe my diagram wasn't perfectly lined up or this wasn't drawn like exactly, but it is in the center with respect to the model. So leave it there and it will work just fine. Let's approximate the shape of this, but I don't feel like doing this circle. Instead, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it longer and I'm gonna have this one and this one and this one and this one all the same length. And it looks like they go almost into the between this line and this line so this line here yeah right into about the middle so let's do that now this is just a flat plane and there it is there and it's not even at the surface and so we're actually going to bring this closer to the surface of our model and we could do this and we're going to add some thickness in a minute if i do this it's embedded so right about there let's go one look at the front again and in wireframe and i'm going to be to box select or border select and i'm going to pull down to about the middle of this line and this line and that's it all right uh we're going to use this to make this and this and this one but we need to give this some thickness so let's get out of wireframe there we go so we're going to extrude let's hit e to extrude and go in this y direction maybe about that thick all right i mean there's no set amount we're just going to choose what we want and uh, go back into object mode now because we brought in the plane right here at the 3d cursor and then i moved it up my my gizmo or transform tool is still down at the 3d cursor with this object selected 
choose set origin origin to geometry and that'll move it to the geometry of this object here make sure that this is a little bit embedded like that and let's add a bevel modifier to this because it's very sharp right now so add modifier bevel and let's choose for segments two and then maybe we'll just click smoothing and see maybe we'll be done with it maybe that's good enough yep looks great all right cool so we are going to now not seven one i'll go back into wireframe we are now going to position these at these spots all right and the way that we're going to do this is um we're going to use the spin uh tool over here select your object in object mode and make sure that the transform tool the gizmo thing here is back at the 3d cursor you have to do that if you want to spin something around the middle like if you're holding a ball on a string right your fist where you're holding that string is the middle and you swing it around just imagine the middle is right here and so we got to set this back to the 3d cursor so go set origin to 3d cursor i know i just told you a minute ago with that selected to change the origin of geometry and we often do that to manipulate it but the spin origin goes to the 3d cursor but this is selected and we go into edit mode we hit a to select it all so we're now ready to spin all right we'll come over here choose spin and you will start to see a number of copies going around the 3d cursor here we want to choose 360 and we want four is that what we want there we want four of these and it lines up pretty good with the diagram all right but we're not done yet select them all and go w remove doubles and look at the top of the screen it removed some vertices we also want to go Control N to flip any polys that may have gone weird. Let's go out of wireframe, back into solid, and deselect and go back into object mode. And there, we've positioned those in the right place. I keep going to top view. All right, and then using the spin. Now we're going to use that some more. We're going to make these shorter ones and then these ones. All right, so let's get out of wireframe. Okay, I'm going to select this. Now they're all selected, all right? Um, I want to use just one of these to build the shorter one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select one of the vertices or one of the edges or one of the faces, it doesn't matter, of this. I'm going to go Control L and that will choose or select what is linked to it. In other words, that whole object. I'm going to copy it, Shift D and left mouse click there's a copy right on top of the other one but i need to do something else i want to break it away so i'm going to go p separate by selection now go back into object mode and it looks like i've got everything selected if i just click on there i actually have the copy right on top of it now we want to set origin to geometry all right we can move this but let's not do that yet let's go into wireframe and look and think about what we want to do here i want this to be shorter and come to about this line here so i'm going to go into edit mode and because this has thickness i want to make sure i'm in wireframe and b to box select so i get the vertices of you know all of those vertices um i'm now going to pull to about here so I get the approximate size of this now do I want to change the thickness at all I can easily do that if I wanted to I could select it all I could scale in the X just a little bit just like that okay I'm not going to do any more all right so I've done that now deselect go back into object mode and set your origin back to the 3d cursor all right go in edit mode again and select the whole thing now here's what we're going to do we're going to spin again but i don't really want this one on top of that but we're going to spin it till it's in the right positions and then we're going to delete what we don't need all right so with that done there let's spin 360 but not four times let's keep upping it and see what happens see the way they're moving keep going keep going to there all right i have one there and there 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 all right now 
Let's do the same thing. Let's select everything, W, remove doubles. It removes some, control N to flip any polys. Now, if we go out into object mode and that, you will see that I have extra ones on top of these big ones. I wanna get rid of those and I can't just select, select it and delete it. It selects the whole group. So go into edit mode and select a piece of it, control L and then X, vertices delete vertices that one's gone just the, the the ones on top control l x vertices control l x vertices and the last one Ooh, did i get one well control l x vertices beautiful save your work it's starting to look like a clock isn't it all right now we're gonna do the little tick marks How many seconds in a minute? 60, so we're gonna need 60 copies. Front view, wireframe. Let's start by using, let's start with the, the, these ones. It's, it's easier to start with one that's not on an angle, I think. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in edit mode and I wanna make a copy of this. Select a piece, control L, shift D to make a copy and P by selection to break it out back in object mode. And let's go into wire, uh, out of wireframe. There's that. Okay, there, where is it? There it is, it's just a single one because if I select, again, th that's the one that's associated with all of these. So just that, there it is. Okay, so now let's go back into edit mode. Uh, and select it and go into wireframe. Okay, so we're gonna make these little guys and they're, they, they're maybe they don't come to the, quite to, do they come to the end yeah they kind of come to the end there but they're about maybe what um, half the size so let's just box select these and uh well i'm just going to bring it up to about the height that it should be like imagine it's going around there but let's make these thinner scale these in the x nice and thin like that i mean not too thin so you can't see them all right, that's good enough. Let's go into solid, and there it is. And yeah, okay, and object mode. And let's make sure that, uh, and I think we do have our cursor is, is right at the 3D cursor. Go back into edit mode, and by the way, you must be in an orthographic view to spin properly. If I'm like this, because I want to watch it spin, it will spin out of control. You've got to be in orthographic. Okay, but well watch this, watch what you can do. Let's do it in wireframe though, so we can see what's underneath. We're gonna hit spin 360. Okay, there they are, these dark ones. That's not enough. If you start bringing this up, you'll see they're moving. And if you bring it up to 60, not 61, they line up perfectly. Now, by the way, I want to show you something. All right, I can be on an angle when I do this part, not that I can see anything on an angle, but not when you start the spin. Select them all, W, remove doubles, there will be some, control N, beautiful. Now, let's go into solid. We have the same problem we had before. I got some of these lying on other ones. We are gonna have to go in, select a piece, control L, X, delete vertices. Go in, control L, X, delete vertices. Get my point. Not faces, faces would work too, but I like to do vertices. Oh, don't hit something wrong. If you can help it, it's like going down the stairs, you know, the way you can just run down the stairs and without thinking and sometimes you think about it and all of a sudden you miss that. All right, I did it. Check it out. There's the spin tool. Just got to make sure that you're spinning around the 3D cursor right in the center of the thing you want. Works really good for circular stuff. All right, what else do we need to do? Did I save? I think I probably saved. Oh, we need to do the hands. Well, guess what? We are going to be using this. I'm gonna go in, select a piece, Control L, Shift D, P to make it a new object, select it, 
and let's do origin to geometry to bring our transform tool to there and move it down a little bit okay back into wireframe all right we're going to make the hands out of this let's make this hand here i guess the minute hand so uh, I'm just going to continue to bring this down. Now this is kind of important. I'm gonna to try to touch right in the middle where I think all of those hands meet, all right? And I am going to rotate this to match the angle that this is on, but I'm gonna pivot it from the 3D cursor right there in the middle. So I'm going to set right here, my pivot point to the 3D cursor and it moves it right down there. And then I'm gonna rotate this in the y direction all right because the y is is the one that's going like this okay i'm going to rotate around the y watch this r y and i'm just going to start pulling and pushing until i can roughly match that now i'm going to go into edit mode of this and it's got some thickness all right so i am going to b to border select I'm going to go back to median point. That's the default. All right, median point. But how am I going to pull this? I mean, if I pull it in the Z, it's going to go up. If I pull in the X, I mean, too bad I couldn't go XZ or something. Well, I'm going to switch from global to normal. And now I can just follow this arrow and pull it right up to about there. And that's fine. Okay, that one's done. I'll go back to global and go back into object mode. I'm going to copy this and make this one shift D and let's set the, th the uh, pivot point to the 3D cursor and let's rotate in the Y again and go whatever way you want and let's get over to about there. Okay, now we need to shorten this one. So let's go into edit mode. Let's box select there and let's switch back to normal. And by the way, we can come back to median point and push along the Z. I believe that's the length, right? Cool. All right. Well, we're going to do it one more time. Shift D. And I'll just, um, let's go back into global. Shift D. And let's put the 3D cursor right there. Pivot point. Let's rotate in the Y. And, and ah, it's going crazy. Hold shift if you want to move slower. Okay. That's a about where I want it and I'm going to lengthen it this way and this way so we're going to go back to median point into edit mode select go into normal and pull like that and over here we're going to box select and here's the thing is that a circle part of this the second hand probably is um, but I think I'm going to do a separate circle to that now they're all sort of laying in the same plane and it looks like it looks like an airplane. And so I'm going to move these uh, a little bit. Um, let's move, let's select the hour hand and the second hand and let's pull them up a little bit just above here. And then the second hand and pull it up the highest. And I can go to three and try to look from the side view. Man, that didn't help very much. Just tilt it a bit. And that looks, that looks okay. I don't want them too far apart, so I'm just gonna try to adjust them like that. That's good enough because we're gonna bring in a cylinder right in the middle, so let's look from the front. 3D cursor is right there. I am in median point, so I'm gonna go Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. I'm gonna use all the default values, and we are going to RX 90, rotate it 90, and it's huge, so select it and S to scale it down. And where did it go? It's gone under. There we go. Let's keep S'ing it to there and we bring it up. And then you decide how big you want this thing to be. And I'm not saying that's how it should be, but that's going to be okay for what we want to do. In fact, maybe I'll bring this up just a tiny bit. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty or anything, so let's make it look prettier. So let's select the cylinder. And let's shift alt and click this edge here. Actually, if I'm in edge selection, you'll see just that edge and bevel. Control B and pull away till you get a region like this. And then roll your mouse wheel up one, two, maybe three times and click to finish. Come out. Now, 
it's rounded it but it's very faceted if i hit smoothing it does that but we need to add probably an edge loop down here now well, it's not changing it much i'm adding two edge loops there it didn't change it and that's just fine how about that okay so is it looking like the diagram let's look front view all right that the only thing we didn't do is that little circle and the fact that maybe the minute hand probably does expand out into a circle and has the little tail on it but that's that's totally fine we got this we got that where are we at the last thing all right well not quite the last thing actually because if we look from the side we can see there's this dome like part the glass now i wasn't planning on adding materials to this this is just for modeling um, so if I model that and put it there, you won't be able to see any of this stuff, but I'll show you how I would do that. And then you can decide if you wanted to add glass or not. And by the way, is this bugging you? This grid here, it's bugging me. So hit N and let's go to display. Let's close those up. Go to display and turn off grid floor. Just get rid of that, but leave the axes on. They're helpful. All right, cool. Let's make that glass type stuff 3d cursor is right there so we're going to go shift a and we're going to bring in a mesh uv sphere all right but we're going to rotate this so that the top of the sphere faces out this is look, will look better so let's rx 90 just like that all right starting to look like some kind of a weird spaceship um we're going to go into edit mode and wireframe and uh, vertex is what I would select and suggest and deselect. Let's box or border select all these back vertices, leaving this hor this straight up and down one. And let's, well, they're all straight up and down, but you know, the middle one, X vertices. Okay, so we have that. Now, let's select it all and move it so that the bottom line is in line with sort of the face of this. Now, that doesn't quite fit, so let's maybe scale S and just scale a bit, but ah, it's moving away, that's okay. Just get it kind of close and then move it back and say, okay, I imagine that could fit in there. Right now, it really does look like a spaceship. Cool. Well, now we want to make it smaller here and sort of match the contour of this. So what I would suggest is shift shift alt and select that whole edge and bring the 3d cursor to there as the pivot 3d cursor like that all right uh, nope i need to do one more step select that edge and go shift s cursor to select it and bring the 3d cursor there so i'll do that again 3d cursor is out somewhere like that uh and i'm on median point okay so it's all crazy select that edge go shift s cursor to select it that will bring the 3d cursor to the center of that edge whatever you select then switch the pivot point to 3d cursor select everything now and i'm going to scale in the z and it's going to pull it down in this direction towards this pivot point watch this sz not z ah make sure you're in global it's y okay s y and watch and just keep going until i can't see it anymore but roughly get it there okay now the only thing is it may not have perfectly fit uh this and so you may have to tweak it a little bit all right and especially when we add a subdivision surface now which we will do in object mode it may shrink in a little bit but it's still pretty good and smooth and that would be you know your could be your glass and if you wanted to change the size you could scale it it's a tiny bit um, but now you can't see anything underneath it so i'm just going to move this out like that all right and there and there it is okay so let's uh, look at the back now and uh, see what we can do about this stuff here we've got some text here and really um i'm just going to do this in um in 3D, all right, in, in actual polygons. So let's bring in some text right at the 3D cursor, which is, uh, well, it's in the middle of that. And by the way, don't forget to go back to median point. 
a lot of things to remember. Um, that's fine, I can have my 3D cursor right there as I look at the back. All right, so in wireframe, uh, we want to we want to bring in something that says FTE. I'm not going to do it like that. Just bring in some text. Where's text there? And uh, okay, what do we got here? We got to change the orientation. So let's uh, rotate X90, and uh, it's backwards, and then rotate around the Z. Rotate Z 180. And we should get the right orientation. I hope. Set the origin to geometry so it's right in the center and I'm gonna hit G and I can just drag the text over and S to scale and okay maybe we'll need it bigger but we'll see we'll just move things around all right there's the center all right let's hit edit and backspace and go F T E not in caps though okay like that object mode and we'll just sort of position it and we'll scale it by the way, you can come over to the F and scroll down to center there. Oh, jeez, what's going on? Stop that. There we go. And just scale it till it's, till it's kind of similar to what you would want. Um, you can change fonts. Let's go back into a solid view. Now, you can't see it, so I'm just going to bring it out to here. It's still very, very flat, so uh, before I change fonts, I'll show you how to make that thicker. Under geometry here, I'll just pull that out. I'm gonna hit click, or I'm gonna click on extrude and drag. You see it's getting thicker, all right? So I want something, you know, with some thickness. You can also increase the bevel a little bit and maybe resolution couple, and that's good enough, but I, if you don't like that font, the default font, you could come in and click on the F here under probably regular, uh, sorry, the open, and navigate to your fonts, which in Windows or uh, system is under usually under C, Windows, fonts, and then you can see them by clicking that button and just choose a font that, that you like. Some fonts will work better than others, uh, I'm going to try this one here. Now I don't like that, so I don't like that font there. So let's see if I can get it in my memory here. Recent. And I'll just come down and I'll choose a different font. I'll try this one. Okay. Yeah, I don't like that one either. All right, well... I'm not having a lot of luck. Some letters look better than others. How about this one? No, no. Okay, I'm gonna leave it as the default font. <laughs> How about that? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, control one. Yeah, why not? That's fine. Okay, and we get uh, some, you know, a little bit of thickness there. And I'm just gonna push it in a little bit more and we'll see about beveling it. Okay, so that's looking okay. Um, the last thing we're going to do, and actually this thing's bothering me, so I'm gonna select it and go H and just hide it. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some text that goes around. Now, we're just gonna see how well this works. Um, what I wanna suggest we do is use one of these edges that go around roughly where we want the text as a curve, as a guide, essentially. So watch this. I'm gonna go out of edit mode and select this part of the watch and find a curve or find a, 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 an edge that goes all the way around that's close to where we want it, like that one, all right? And I can select it in vertex selection or edge selection, doesn't matter. I'm gonna use this as a guide. I'm gonna copy it, shift D, and P by selection, break it out so I can find it and select it on its own. Set origin to geometry. So my, my th transform tool is right in the middle of this. This line here, I'm gonna delete later, but right now I'm gonna convert it to a curve. So with it selected, go Alt-C, curve from mesh, and it's now a curve. Okay, cool. Now, let's do our text. Now. I feel like just taking that text and copying it. In fact, I think I will. Shift D and bring it up sort of to the curve because I'm gonna want it rounded like that. But that's far too big, so let's just make it smaller. 
And let's look at the back in wireframe and see what it says here. All right, in fact, I might bring it to around there to get the size. I'm gonna go into edit mode uh, on my text. And in capital, it says what? FTE30, I can't even tell. 300? All right, let's have a look at this. Let's hide that. 3003, Alt-H to bring it back. 3003, 03, 03, I may have had that wrong. I'm not gonna do the dot in the middle. Instead, I'm gonna do a space and a hyphen. And then it says stainless steel case. So stainless steel case. And it's gonna go off my screen. And then it says three ATM water resistant. Three like atmosphere water resistant space. Swiss movement. Let's go smaller. Swiss movement hyphen. And then it goes back to the to the beginning. Object mode. That's what it is, right? All right. Scale it a little bit. Okay, so I have this. Let's go out of there into solid. So we've got a little bit of thickness on there. And I can adjust that still. I can extrude it more if I want. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to give it a try. This is all in a straight line. I want it to curve. Here we go. Select your text. Come over to the wrench. Choose curve. And under object, click there and choose that circle. Now, it's all screwy Louie. Uh, and we are going to do that. Now, I want to see if I've got it in the right orientation. Uh, or what, or if I need, and then by the way, so the different axes is we'll move them around. I'm hoping it's in the right orientation. Let's see. Okay, some of it's upside down, some of it's upside down, some of it's right side up. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. So, uh, you just mess with the axes, and you don't have to get it to line up. I'm not trying to do that, that's crazy. Uh, except mine is going 3 ATM. Oh, is it mine reading backwards? Or is it good? Okay, use the Y to pull it out a little bit. This is the weirdest part, really. I just have to figure out here, by the way, with my gizmo way out there, I can go set origin a 3D cursor and then I can uh, still do all the things that I was doing. Let's go back to F and let's extrude this more just so I can see it a bit better. Okay. I just want to think about the fact that it looks upside down and inverted and I'm just wondering if I can do anything about that oh not that um, one thing I can do what can I do can I rotate this can I go RX 180 and will that make a difference is it all backwards now RZ 180 did I do it not that. I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to bring that in. I think I got it. You just have to experiment and flip things around. I don't know if I got it. Still, so it's upside down, so it's right side up. Yeah, it's great. It's exactly what I want. Okay, and once you're uh, happy that you got it in the curve, you can still manipulate it. Is uh, You come back over to this. And uh, I'm going to try to apply it. And I get a warning, cannot apply modifier for this object type. It just means I have to convert my text, Alt-C, Alt-C, to a mesh. And then it will apply it. And there. Okay. And I can now, I can pull it out. I can push it in. And I can do a few different things. This is not the nicest font to use. All right. But it's, it's still, I can now delete this curve and nothing else. And we've done it.
Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move this to another layer and get rid of it. There we go. So we've created what we wanted to from the diagram and it matches the diagram and we haven't put materials or anything on it but if you want to make it look kind of cool just to end off you can hit N and come over to shading and click on ambient occlusion matte cap and then click on there and choose uh, a really cool uh, material uh, just for uh, in the viewport all right, you can, of course, click uh, the camera and render uh, in OpenGL right there and then hit escape and you know, find another angle and you can render and then you can save image, save as and you can save that as opposed to putting in lights in a camera and stuff like that. So you can experiment with the different uh, matte cap materials and you'll see that you've got a very nice product. All right, so I hope uh, that helped you learn how to model uh, this and uh, some of the techniques. Thanks for watching.